I want to take you through my own personal preference on how to go about restoring and cleaning up these old antique sewing machines. You know, this is a typical example of something you might find, and this one came to me very complete, uh, but it needed some cleaning and restoring of the finish, and the machine head needed to be cleaned. And this is a pretty typical example of what you'll find out there. This one from a scale of 1 to 10 is probably around an 8 as far as its condition. Being 100 plus years old, it's actually a pretty good shape. And basically, when I clean a machine head, I always start with sewing machine oil. It's the most gentle way of cleaning these, but you will come across dust and grime and rust that needs a little more than just machine oil. And to move, remove rust, I'll use some steel wool and just a little elbow grease with some uh, sometimes some evapo rust, which is a product you can find that uh, kind of dissolves rust. It works pretty well. It's usually my last resort. I'll try to polish it out first. And what you'll find under these machines is a lot of typical dust and grime, dried up old oil. And I have found that for getting off uh, that dried, crusty, gummy, greasy oil off the bottom of these. Acetone works really, really well on the silver parts, the nickel plated and the chrome parts. Anything that's silver doesn't have a paint surface or an enamel surface on it. You do not want to use that on decals. You don't want to use it on the main uh, body of the machine, but the silver parts, it does a pretty good job. You can see here, it'll take off most of that grime. And you want to be sure to also open up the faceplate where the needle bar and the uh, presser foot bar are up in there. It'll be full of dust and lint and grime also. You want to do the same thing to it like I've done on the bottom of this machine clean out as much as you can, oil it up really well, and once I've gone through and really cleaned the grime off, I give everything a really good oiling, a really good coat, coating of oil just to keep it in good shape, and that helps the surfaces. So you go from something like this to where it's pretty, pretty darn good and pretty clean. It's not perfect, but it's certainly good enough to sew with. My approach to restoring a cabinet, this one was in fairly good shape considering it's 100 plus years old. But I like to keep as much of an original surface as I can. But I don't want it to look like this uh, where it's got a lot of water damage on top, uh, the veneers coming up. You can see that some of the finish is missing. But I like to keep the finish. There, this one also had some mildew on the back and it had been leaked on in a basement. And down in the belly of it, it also had some of this uh, white powdery mildew. <clears throat> so you, you're going to run into these kinds of things. And what I have found with uh, an iron, the irons on the, this one happened to be fairly rusted. What I like to use is mineral oil. I'll just clean them up really well. And I'll use a light uh, mineral oil. It doesn't smell and it's very clean, but it's heavier than the machine oil and it's good for the irons. And that's what I use on my irons to get them all cleaned up. I rarely repaint it, but you'll run into these peeling veneers. And I found that they can be glued down fairly easy and I've had a lot of good luck with it. And I just typically use a plain old wood glue, some clamps, and it'll be the first thing I'll do. And then I'll go on to the finish, and uh, I have found that I can get rid of most of the problems with the finish with what I like to use, which is Howard's Restora Finish. This product doesn't strip your finish, but what it can do is it, with a little steel wool, I use a 4 aught steel wool, real, real thin, light wool, and it will take up a little bit of the finish and move it around for you, so you end up with what was really close to original and it will clean up just about anything. The one thing I found that it won't handle very well are some of the black stains you might find on a machine. But it handles the scratches and the mildews and the dryness and it puts a little bit of film of the original finish, moves that around and it looks pretty darn good after you've uh, used some of this restore finish. 
you can get them with different stains in them. This one happens to be oak that I'm using. This is an oak cabinet, but you can go from looking like this to where it'll be pretty stunning uh, change to, to what it looks like. And it'll look like this after using a little restore finish on it. But I like to keep them original if I can. And I've found that most of them can be kept original. I've never replaced a veneer. I will glue them and work with them. And they'll start looking pretty darn good after a while. And here I've, I've gone all over it with the restore finish and it's looking very nice and you can see such a stunning difference with just a little restore finish and it doesn't take long to do this uh, it's really pretty quick and you can go from a dried up mildewy looking piece like this to something like this which is very very bright and clean and, and looks really nice so uh, this is my preferred method of doing it. A lot of people use other methods and that's fine, but this is just how I do it and I wanted to share because I get a lot of questions about restoring these machines and their cabinets. And after you've gone through with that, uh, Howard recommends you use their feed in wax all over the, the cabinet and that helps feed the wood and keep it pliable and soft and maintain it and it also brings out a little more depth of the color and the grain and so you're you know you go from really dried dried up veneer to a nice rich fed waxed veneer and it'll last longer now here's an example of that corner that I repaired where I glued down they had saved a chip that chip that was chipped out of that veneer, fortunately for me, was in the drawer and I was able to glue it back on and no, it's not perfect, there's still some missing, but for me it's good enough. I mean, I think this went from uh, something you may not want to display to something that I'm very happy to put in my living room. Now the woman that I got this from, she gave this to me for free because uh, she wasn't able to restore it. It had been passed down through three generations and uh, she just wanted to see it cleaned up, restored, and used again. She, When she was six years old, she sewed on this machine and made her first pair of shorts and she's in her 50s now, so that was a long time ago. And she would go and, and help her grandmother sew with this machine. Uh, they're from the Seattle area. That's why there's some of the rust and mildew because it's damp over there. And she, I sent her pictures of this. I got the original manual with this when she gave it to me, which is really nice. Uh, sometimes you'll get these, uh, sometimes you won't. And if you don't, they're easy to find online for your particular machine. It's always nice to have the original manual. So I brought her in and I wanted to test her out to sew. And so you can see here uh, that this machine will sew perfectly after being cleaned and oiled. And I have over 50 antique and vintage sewing machines and I have a single one and not a single one has, has had problems sewing for me. I've been able to sew with every one of them. Uh, and this is after 100 plus years and this machine still sews perfectly and that's been my experience with these old machines they just last forever they sew forever this machine will way outlast me and it sews perfectly just with a little cleaning and a little care and they're just excellent machines and they, they, it's just wonderful to restore them. I sent the, the pictures of this after I cleaned it up to the woman that gave it to me and she was so happy and so thrilled to see it in really nice condition again and what she rem remembered as a child. And uh, These things mean to, a lot to families that pass them down. That's why they're still around. There's lots of them around. People keep them. They were important to families back when they were new and uh, people don't want to let them go. So you'll find them in barns, you'll find them in garages, but not everyone knows or can, can handle taking on the restoration task. But it's nice and very rewarding to take one of these old beauties and, and fix them up and use them again. And I just love using my treadle machines. So if you manage to get, get one, 
uh, go ahead and restore it and have fun with it.